Hello, hello. Okie dokie. We are live. Cool. So let's start where we left before. Um, so we it's we managed to change the export address of the function. Which is good, but we were facing some trouble because um, when when we do this change, the address that is afterwards computed is in a region of memory that doesn't exist. So I was thinking about it. Uh, why that would be? Why why does it why is it doing that? And so what I'm going to do is load everything. Yes. So we're gonna open Uh, yeah, this one. Gonna f follow the same process that we always do. Uh, let me just change here something. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, until we get to create remote thread, and now we attach to the Firefox process, which is great. Mm. Okay. And now we need to set some breakpoints because I don't remember if we had any. Uh, I don't think so. So these breakpoints are not going to be triggered. So let's set one in get module handle W. Search for it. It's an import toggle breakpoint, just to be sure. And now we let it run and we inject our library. And so if we run until return, here it is. So this is our code, our library code. And this is where we start to change the export tra uh, table. This is this is the first virtual protect call, and here it is the first vir oh, sorry, the first virtual protect call, and this is the last one. So here is where we is basically this operation here, and you can see here the sub, so he's making the pointer and then doing all the stuff. Okay, so why isn't this working? Um, easy. Let's look at maybe the memory map is not such a good idea, but we can look at it. So if we look at library, oh no, sorry, it's easier on symbols. So if we look at our library. This is the address where our library is. So actually, I'm going to following this assembly. 
and I'm gonna copy the address. So this is where our library was loaded in the memory of Firefox. And let's look at kernel 32, kernel base kernel 32. And if we copy the address, this is where kernel 32 was loaded. Okay. So let me make it a little bit more graphical, I guess. Which keyboard is this? So this is more or less the memory layout. This is the memory layout. Okay. And this is our library. And this is kernel 32. So what seems to be the problem? So we have our function, our hook function, in this memory uh, address space. And then we have the function that we want to hook around here. So the problem is that the export table addresses or I wouldn't call it, the export table offset uh, um, offsets contained in the export table export address table EAT are D words, which basically means they are 32 bits. Right? So they can only start 32 bits. The problem is that if you look at those, at these addresses, this uh, layout, this one is more than 32 bits. This one is okay, it's 32 bits, it fits. But this one isn't. So this is way smaller than this one. So the difference in between them, so when you are calculating the offset, is going to be bigger than 32 bits. So when you try to store it, it only it will only store the first 32 bits okay or anyways it, when it reads it it will only read the first 32 bits because then you probably are overriding um, the next offset when you write it into memory so that's a big uh, no-no um, and just for confirmation I'm gonna show you um, so if we do, is this hexadecimal? No, sorry. So if we do 7 FF 9, uh, sorry, A, B, yeah, and 1000, 10, 0, 0. Right, then minus. Now we can ignore the zeros, so it's five D C A one thousand. It gives you this. This value is way over thirty two bits, so it will never work because a D word is only 32 bits, 4 bytes. So that's why um, where am I? Uh, 
following them. No, um, let's just go there. So that's why I'm gonna let it run. So we did the virtual protect. So basically, we are at this point here. So, and we are doing the make delta calculation. So, if we look at RDX, that's the value 5DCA13B0 for the new create process W. Then we load the address um, for the kernel. Oh, why is it loading the wrong address? Wait. Uh, this looks like data. Oh, no, sorry. This is the offset. Never mind. Uh, this is the kernel module. Right? Yeah, this is the kernel module. Following dump. Yeah, this is the kernel module. The kernel 32.dll, which is... We have to calculate the offset based on that. So it's the DOS header of the kernel 32.tll. And then when we do the subtraction, this is what you get. It's not exactly the same value as it, it is here uh, because the, the new create process w function is not on the same address as this one but it's still more than 32 bits so the best way we have to find a way I have to find a way to deal with this um, Actually, it's this one. Anyways, actually, the sub, the value is this, which is badly calculated, actually. Oh, it uh, wraps around? Is it because it's wrapping around? Yeah, I think it's because it's wrapping around. Anyways. It's going to be bigger than uh, 32 bits and it won't fit, so we need to sort out some way of making it fit. And you see you're only getting EDX. So you see the calculation was on to RDX, which is a 64 bit, and then you are storing in memory only 32 bits. So it's never gonna work, uh, even unless, unless this space here would be smaller uh, than uh, 32 bits, but there might be cases where it's not gonna be. So it's not something that is consistent, consistent or that consistent. We cannot make that assumption. So we need to find a way um, to make this work. So what we're gonna do, I need to, uh, I need to Okay. Um, so, okay, I don't need this anymore for now. I don't need this anymore for now. Save. So, what I'm thinking 
we have some options. Either we go back to the import table hooks and we hook every single function or, well, every single module that we might require that uses those functions. Um, which I don't really want to do. Um, or we can try potentially learn something new and make it happen. So if we look Okay, symbols. Let's look at uh, create process. Let me think. Let me think. Some of them, some of the functions are straight up jump, jumps to the data segment, which is basically where the import or the address is for the, the actual function. And some others, they do have some code to it, like create process W. So there is a technique which is basically using stubs or trampolines, as they are called. So, um, so what you do, maybe I can illustrate it in paint. So you have, here you have your hook function. Um, here you have your hook function. Here you have uh, your actual real function um, and what you do and this real function has a bunch of code right has a bunch of code here whatever it is we just to illustrate lines of code so these lines here that you're seeing here so what we can do is we can copy part of this these lines of code okay. we can copy part of these lines of code put it these lines of code somewhere else in some other region of memory then add our own code here which which would then um, jump this Vectoring of paint nowadays is a little bit of a pain. Oh, okay, I see what I'm doing wrong. Um, jump into our own code. So let me do some. Let me do some lines here for our own code, our own hook function code. And it will jump over here, right? And then when we want to call the original function, we have here a jump or whatever instruction it is that goes straight to this copied original copied code and then the original copied code 
as a jump to the continuation of the original function. So this is basically what they would call the trampoline. So you copy original uh, uh, codes the, from the function that you want to hook into a region of memory that is executable. Then you replace this, the, this area here with the code that you need in order to jump to your hook function. You do your magic in the hook function and then you call the copied original code that will execute the initial instructions of the original function and then jump to the continuation. We can do that and then whatever we did here could be reused but it would be basically a glorified get proc address function because we would just be getting this address here or we could also uh, instead of doing this let me put it somewhere lower instead of doing this you see how there is always this buffer in between functions is always and some of them are somewhat big um, we could potentially instead of replacing the initial section of the function with the code that we want that the code that detours into ours i was thinking of maybe use this buffering space here to put our instructions change the export table to to point to this one here and then we wouldn't have to be messing around with um, how much do we replace these ones here uh, it's and how, how how big it is each instruction um, because to do this we need to use uh, we need to understand what is the length of each instruction we need to know the length of our instructions that we want to put here and we need to know the length of the instructions that we um, of the original function that we are replacing because we don't want to replace things in the middle of an instruction because then it will fail um, so if we use like this buffer uh, sorry if we use like the empty spaces uh, basically what it's called code caves then it would pro potentially simplify um, everything we could still use export hooks we would be changing the offset of the export address table to point to our um, new code that we added uh, here and we wouldn't have to do this this would not happen this would not happen we would still have here the original code and it would be a little bit simpler because we wouldn't have to do to add the length uh, disassembler engine. Um, if you want to know more about those uh, and their use cases, oh, they are pretty useful and pretty small. Um, unless I would advise you to have a look at it, into it, I might, because I'm really inclined to go this route to just search for. Uh, code cave in the actual kernel 32 DLL that is big enough to have our code for example this one or this one and just put our detouring code here so it is a balancing so it's 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 a it's two options either we add a length disassembler and we replace original bytes of the functions 
with our own bikes and we create a trampoline or a stub. I like to call them stubs more than trampolines. Um, or we create the code to search the memory of uh, on the in the code section, search the memory of kernel 32.dll and to find code caves, empty spaces of code where we can put our own code uh, to detour, uh, to hook the functions. So I'm more inclined to the latter. Yeah. I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try that approach first and then we'll see if uh, in the end, um, I'll, uh, I'll implement the other approach because the other approach you also learn quite a lot and you understand a little bit uh, about how to um, disassemble things in a simple manner just by extracting the length how much how powerful that is without even uh, doing much uh, okay so I think I'm pretty certain this is the way I want to go um, we're gonna have to have a structure, I think, to store some data on. Um, yeah, That's, I think is a good approach. I'm gonna just going to do a small pause. I'll be back in one or two minutes. Um, yeah.
Okay, I'm back. Back on office. So, uh, how are we going to do this then? I'm going to move this function here. And I think I had here. This could potentially be a lot easier because we could just iterate over every single module that was loaded and just <laughs> replace the import table. Um, anyways, let's try and learn something new. <sighs> okay. Okay, so the first thing, actually we're going to reuse this part of the code, this part of the code, yep, and now let me see what we need. Other. So we need um, we need to know we need to know the sections. Um, of the execute of the portable executable file, because I don't want to be searching the entire um, memory mapping of the executable. I just want to search the section that has that is code and is executable. Let's see. Or we can potentially uh, that's going to be hard. See what they do. For sections in G sections, so the G is okay, it's already pre parsed, I think. Uh, I think this is uh, hidden by the library. Let's see what it shows here. Or see all imported functions, code. Okay. 
section headers. Okay, so this is how you handle sections in P. Get file offset to import table, yeah, that I don't care. Actually, this code would have been very useful. <laughs> uh, when we were struggling with the, when I was struggling with the import table. So let's see. So we need to calculate where the first section is located. So it's empty header. Plus the size of a D word plus the size of a image file header. This one here is a little bit Oh, is it skipping the signature? Yeah, I think it's skipping the signature. It's skipping the signature. I think that's that's what he's doing. Come on. No. Oh. Yeah, it's keeping the signature, then it's getting image file header, image optional header. Yep, okay. And that's exactly what it's doing. It's keeping the signature, getting the size of the image file header, and then getting the size of the optional header. In this case, we know that is the 64-bit um, the version, so we can potentially just use the 64-bit version uh, using the size of. So what I'm going to do is uh, make pointer to of type cannot be the word it has to be this one. SC header and then it's this one empty header and then it's the size of the word so we are skipping we are skipping the signature It's interesting because we know it's 64 bits. So why not? Just why not do size of um, image and T. Uh, okay. Headers. Right. Can we do this? Potentially we can. Let me just double check one thing. Optional header. Yeah, because it's an array, it's a fixed sized array. I think we can do this. Um, I truly think that we can do this like this.
instead of having to sum up the size of the of the signature, sum up the size of the uh, whatever what what is the name file header, and sum up the size of the optional header which in this case is the 64-bit version. I think we can do it like this. I could be potentially wrong. There's a very high chance that I'm wrong. Um, let's see some other example maybe. Uh, let's see P P parse sections example maybe uh, I already watched uh, check this one I think this is where I was right yeah this is the Mm-hmm. I think this is too complex. This one is potentially too complex to be looking at. No, I don't care. Let's see if I can find something here. No. Okay, it's um, probably easier if I search for wrong key combination. <coughs> Oh, here it is. Maybe this will help. Yada, yada, yada. Map view file. Number of sections. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, it's just doing it's doing the size of the anti header. So I think we're pretty safe uh, by doing this. And it simplifies the code quite a lot, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and looking at it, we need also the number of sections, which is true. Um, Um, yeah, I don't care about the import directory. Oh. So, what this is not, I don't need to have a, a variable for this. So, what I'm going to do is index equals zero index then anti header file header number of sections and then plus plus index and we have the first section header and we have all of this And then the next section header. Uh, wait. Yeah. Mm, section size. Uh, 
Okay, 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 I know. Uh, yep. So it's just a list, basically. SC. So the next section header is equal to make pointer image section header and then it goes from the last location plus size of image section header So basically, we are now iterating over the section headers in the PE file. Um, I guess we then need this virtual address and uh, this virtual size. So for example, if I open Now 32.tll and section headers. So virtual size, virtual address. And if we look here, yep. Here it is, a thousand executable code. Because if you look here, that's the virtual address. This is the base address, A, B. And then the, the section that has executable code, which just by looking at the characteristics should be this one, I think. Oh, oh well, you look at the, <laughs> the section name, actually, it's text. Uh, you can see that starts in uh, a thousand, so and that's what you get here a thousand. So we need the virtual address and the virtual size. We can calculate based on this offset, we can calculate where in memory it is, and then with this virtual size, uh, we can calculate where we can our maximum address to where we can search for code caves. If uh, anything is not um, understandable, uh, just ask me. Uh, don't uh, have any problems answering. Uh, so let's see. So we basically we do need this ones and this one. I think. Raw size, I don't really care. Raw address, yeah, not for that's for the raw file. Um, not the one that is loaded in memory, so. And basically, I need to check the characteristics. So I want to find a section. I don't really care which one, I guess. Um, Potentially, I would want to find the section where the function that we want to hook is. Uh, but usually on P files, you only have one uh, executable section, which is usually also the dot text section. Um, so I think that's a safe assumption. Um, we could potentially add a check. So we basically what we could do is uh, get the um, the address of the function that we want to hook, find the section where that function is, and then and then make use of it. Um, I think I'm gonna do that. Uh, it's not a hard check to implement, so I'm think I think I'm gonna do that. So. Um, Uh, 
let's see. Maybe the... So, oh, here it is. I think it only talks about special, but these are the... And it's a bitwise operation. Um, so that shouldn't be a problem. So most likely if I come here and I do image SCN. I'm a little bit dyslexic today. SCN most likely means uh, section. Hmm. Maybe. Initialize, initialized, mem execute, which is 0x to uh, 2000. So if we so Yeah, it doesn't decode the goddamn. Hmm. But, but maybe here. So is executable and read. So if the read one is uh, for starts with a four, then then it matches. Um, then it matches what we are seeing here. For uh, a percent two will give you six, so not not a percent um, or um, where was I? So this is the mem execute, and then uh, no. Yeah, it's here. Mem read. Oh, guess what? <laughs> it's a 4. So basically... Yeah, so that's what we want. This is the, the actual variables that or the actual um, flags that we want. So what... This is easy. So it's if uh, sc header Um, what was it? It's a pointer characteristics, and then we do a bitwise operation to check SC uh, SCN mem execute. So we do this, and I think we have to compare it. Does it return four or, or returns one? I think it returns one. So we can do like this. Uh, if, if it is, How can I do this? Maybe I do a continue or do I do a break? If not like this. Uh, let me just. Okay, I don't care about your notifications. If I do like this, if it's not executable, then I'll continue searching on. I'll continue searching on for a section that is executable. If I found the section that is executable, and what we're gonna do here, yes. Um, 
Jesus. Not working well today. So, kernel 32, and then the procedure name is create process w, and we're going to put here far proceed. Anyways. this and this one goes away this one's missing this so this is what we want and then first thing first is calculate the address in memory where um, the section is so X section address equals um, SC. No, I need to make um, make pointer. So and it's dot header, and the offset is going to be SC header. Virtual address. That's it. So now we have the address, so the lower bound. Now we need to calculate um, the upper bound. Let me have a look at our Okay, I was just remembering something. Uh, anyways, so I'm going to call this upper address and I'm going to call this CC, um, not upper, sorry. This one is the lower address where our section starts and this is the upper address which is where our section ends. Uh, make pointer and it's going to be based on our SC lower address and it's going to add our miscellaneous dot virtual size and now what we're going to do is if uh, I think here I'm actually going to Instead of doing a far proc, I'm going to already translate this to an address. So I'm going to do like this. Um, looks legit. So if or sc lower address is less than create process w uh, and our sc section upper address is bigger than the create process w so we basically found the section where the code of the function that we want to hook is. I'm actually going to do the other way around. If lower address is bigger than create process or 
upper address is lower than correct so if we have so basically if we have the memory address this is the create process function so it needs to be in between okay yeah so I was just trying to visualize so it's the lower address if the lower address is bigger than this then it means that it's all outside of it from the lower bound and if it's the upper address is smaller than this then it means that it's outside of the upper bound otherwise we found the function the the, the section now we need to start to search for code caves uh, but for that we need to know as well what is the size um, of our code um, of the code that we want to add to that code cave to do that we are going to use this this tool is really really good it's from metasploit and it's like it's so awesome i really enjoy it's very useful especially when you are doing shell coding and all these sort of things is really really cool um, So to do this, I am going to which instructions I want to use. So in um, x64 bit, in 64 bit assembly code, at least in uh, the x86 architecture, you cannot have in 32 bits you can, but in 64 bits you cannot have jumps that have... Um, can you in 32 bits? Relative... I think all jumps are always relative. So you don't have uh, absolute uh, values. So you cannot do like uh, jump, then this size of ad uh, of address you cannot have an actual uh, address you have to have an offset so something a lot smaller it's always a, a relative jump at least in 64 bits so what we could do is move the address that we want into a register So this is a 64 bit and then we can jump to that address by jumping to the value of in the registry. The problem with this approach is that you um, basically are messing with registers that might be used on the function call. And that's not, a, you're mucking with them, and that's not a good idea. Um, let me have a look. <sighs> Where was I? Mm, no. At least for create process W, it doesn't seem that it uses racks. Because he's straight up, he's modifying racks without making use of it beforehand. So this function seems okay. Uh, which other function it was? Uh, as user, I think. Yeah. Not this one, sorry. This one. This one seems to be the same thing. It doesn't seem to be using racks. Um, and uh, 
uh, NTDLL, well, no, uh, ADV API DLL, here it is. Uh, what was the name? Because we're gonna have to hook the registry functions. Uh, so I don't know, read key maybe? Read. No. Let's just search for a registry. Does it have. Um, no, it doesn't. It doesn't have regular expressions, the search, so. Anyways, let's just look at some of them. And I'm key A. Create key. No, because he's he's not making use of it as well. Open key. This is a straight up jump, so uh, actually, if it's a straight up jump, I need to um, to check. No, that's not it. Rash open key, where are you? Open key X A. Can be this one, whatever. No, it's also not using racks. Okay, so I think uh, we are pretty safe. Um, might not be that good of assumption for everything, but for our use case, I think we are pretty safe uh, by using this uh, this uh, shell code. So we basically need uh, one, two, and then plus eight, that's 10, 12 bytes. We need to find a code cave of 12 bytes where we can just uh, write it. Yep. Okay, so let's start searching memory. Uh, hmm. We're actually going to need, we are going to need a structure. We might need a structure to store where we are going to write into memory as well. But let's search. Let's first start searching. Um, so it would be for uh, which is going to be equal to the lower address. Then we want to the current uh, address needs to be smaller than the upper address. And we're going to go byte by byte, which could potentially if well, won't take that long but um, yeah uh, easy so actually we could even get away without using this check because if we are checking um, where our create process function is we already know that that uh, region of memory is executable or that section is executable, so we can actually get rid of this one and just check where is to f just find the section where the create process, the original create process function is, and yeah, that solves it, I guess. 
um, because we already know that is executable. Okay, so current address, lower address, then cannot be bigger than upper address, and then we go byte by byte. Um, if even on the ADV API 32.dll, it seems like the padding is made of interrupts. Uh, let's just go further down. Yeah, mostly interrupts, interrupts, interrupts. So basically what we need to be searching for is the byte CCC. And we need 12 of them. Uh, so what we're going to do is um, going to do int count 0 and we're going to do is if uh, how can I do because this is a headers um, I'm not going to use read process memory because that's too much um, how do I dereference the value? Um... Okay, so <sighs> I'm thinking whether I should do this. No, it's okay. So I want a pointer. I do the asterisks, right? Yeah. So the current byte is going to be basically an asterisk to the current uh, current address, right? Um, I'm going to call it code and I need to convert this to a pointer to bytes and then I do reference the value and if uh, equals this Oh, this keyboard is killing me. And I need to make sure the VMs have all the same layout because this is in the Portuguese layout and I'm pretty sure the Windows one is in the English layout. Yeah, so I need to change the layout so I'm not getting confused all the time. Um, So then we basically, if it is equal this, then we increment the count. And if the count is equals 12, we basically found our code cave that we can use. So let's see. Um, I 
think this is it. Okay, let's just wing it. Um, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We'll have to figure out why it's not working. So same thing, TLS callbacks, we jump, entry point, we jump. Before we inject our library, we attach to the Firefox process. We just let it run. Uh, sorry, take out this, this breakpoint. And if we did everything right, we should have uh, a breakpoint occur when it finds a code cave that is of the size we need. Oh, oh my bad, sorry. Totally forgot to uh, actually exit here. Um, make uh, oh, uh, sorry, library make queen all. Okay, let's just move it here. And once again, it would be nice if I could uh, automate this. Anyways, TLS, TLS, breakpoint. Didn't I just... Did I just compile the library? There were no errors. I did copy the library, right? No, but it's not changing. Why is it not changing? Oh, okay, my bad. Okay, so it's the, also the shared folders are not working. Um, let's tr try again. Yep, now it worked. Now we should have a new version. Okay, cool. Okay, now cross our fingers again, see if it works. Nope. Oh yeah, no, it worked. Yep, it looks like it worked. So, now let's see if we can find out um, where the hell uh, is the code that um, where the hell the code cave is <sighs> that's gonna be interesting because it's in the stack yeah it's in the stack and we are comparing is it in the stack I think so so we are comparing the bytes here you can see here the CC so it's comparing to int 3 to the interrupt instruction 
um, but we want here is an ink ink instruction where is the ink instruction here it is so is rbp minus c Following drum. Or following this assembler. No, that's data. So the current address is the one that we are incrementing by one every time. Uh, not sure why it has an op there, but it doesn't matter. RBP minus C. Uh, it's not mocking with RBP. So it should be, oh no, wait. Okay, we found it. There's this one here. Uh, I think so, it's RBP minus 18 because this is also incrementing and it's straight up after the the last instruction of the um, of the 4 yep mm -hmm. I think so an RBP minus one zero C which is 12 so the count is basically 12 uh, integer unsigned where is unsigned byte uh, 12 <laughs> Just to be sure, I wasn't uh, I wasn't doing uh, X math wrong. So it's zero C is twelve. So he did found he did find um, twelve int int three interrupts. And if we follow in the disassembler, a straight up on kernel 32 so here it is it starts here and it gets here I think where where it was one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve perfect that's great that's just perfect uh so we basically found uh, the code seems to be working uh we have a code cave now we need to basically calculate the starting address uh and we're going to reuse some of the code here we're going to reuse a part of this code which is 
gonna use this. This I'm not gonna be using. Gonna use this. And I'm gonna use this one. But now I need to calculate, so I have current address. So I need to, what does this want? Virtual protect needs a LP void. So LP void. And we do LP void. And we don't need to use the make pointer, make pointer macro um, because these are already U-longs. Um, we just need to conv do the math and convert them to a LP void. Uh, so actually, I'm going to no. Uh, yeah. Let's do cave address is basically the current address minus twelve. That's where it starts. And so we go this one and we say here, this is what we want. And the size we want is 12 and is page read write. Yeah, we can do read write and then just restart the old protection. Give address and then twelve. And then we need to write in that region of memory, we need to write this assembly code where we replace this section here with our um, with the address of our new create process w. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the best way of doing that is going to be interesting. We are going to How do I do this? We can... Um, mm, 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 mm. I can do one by one. Which is not really useful or we can do a little bit differently and this is basically z x 48 b8 right Let's just try it like this. Let's try it like this. See, see if it is actually able to add code in it. Uh, oh, stop. And stop. And then run 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 once again then come here attach to firefox run 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 and then inject the library t 
TLS callback, TLS callback, breakpoint. And we saw that it was, we saw that I forgot to actually copy. I always forget this, or I've, I am forgetting this nowadays. Yeah, I forgot to copy the, not the point, forgot to copy the file. see if it works. Hopefully it will. Yep. So Rax points to the Ooh. Something's not right. Let's go back. Four, eight. Oh, okay, 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 okay. It's working, but uh, it's working a little bit badly because um, yeah, it's um, little Indian. So is the the byte order is wrong. So sorry about that. B eight four eight. Then this is the current address. So let's see here. Do zero eight zero seven zero six zero five zero four zero three zero two zero one, and this is going to be a p u long 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 whatever. And then we are going to do the um, e e zero ff. So basically, I'm replicating the code that Metasm uh, generated, the assembly code. Let's copy the files. Let's not forget that. Let's restart. Attach. And then just let it rip. And it should work. Breakpoint. Yeah, that looks good. Let's follow in dump or in this assembler actually. Uh, this is a little bit weird. Oh, I see what I'm doing wrong. Okay, my bad. My bad. Yeah, I see what I'm doing wrong. Uh, Uh, because I'm not incrementing the the address. Um, C. 
So we need to do is car address plus equals to and then car address uh, eight. And then it should be okay. Because I was basically writing always to the same location in memory, which won't work very nicely. So let's just put it here. Inject our library as always, ignore the TLS callbacks, breakpoint, then we follow in this assembler the address of racks, and here it is. Now I have a little bit of a problem because I think we are overriding this function maybe we shouldn't be why does it look like I'm overriding the function okay, let's go back uh, Why does it seem like I'm overriding the function? Because I'm I am taking out twelve. I was expecting to see uh, here to see some interrupts, and I'm not seeing any, so I'm starting to believe that I might just be overriding the function. Uh, we can quickly check that. Uh, kernel 32, RTL unwind, I think. Virtual unwind. And it's the export, and if we click, yep, we are indeed overriding parts of the function. Why? Oh, interesting. Because... Oh, wait. Oh, I see what I'm doing wrong. Yep. Else. Uh, we forgot. I forgot to reset the counter. <laughs> I forgot to reset the counter. Yeah, I think this will solve it, and hopefully we will be able to find. Uh, you should find it. Anyways. Yeah. I think this was the problem. So we were writing, um, we were just counting how many interrupts we were seeing in the code, not so much how many continuous or contiguous uh, interrupts we were seeing. So. No, still the same problem. Uh, did I copy? <laughs> I'm not sure if I copied the files. Did I copy the files? I don't think I did. No, I didn't copy the files. Uh, 
Uh, what am I doing? It's just drip, inject the library, and we got our breakpoint. Yeah, we got our breakpoint. Now let's check. Still, this is no good. Let's do This is really weird. This is really, really weird. It might be that, uh, no, but no. I don't think so. I'm thinking if it's uh, x64 that is having struggling with uh, changed code, but I don't think so. So what I'm going to do is just before this one happens. I want to check the address and see what's what's there and before this one happens and then before this one happens see the code changing as we go through it Always tricky, these sort of things. Always very tricky. And we inject the library. Hopefully, it will work. Exception breakpoint. That's our first breakpoint. And we are subtracting Rax. So Rax is pointing to the kernel. So if we follow in the disassembler, is pointing weirdly somewhere else. Um, yep. The hell. Okay. Okay, so let's knob this one. Okay. No. Weird. Okay, if we run until the next one. Oh. 
follow in this assembler. Um, yeah, we are already overriding. I don't know why is it overriding the RTL virtual unwind function. I really don't. Is it? No, because it's still... Okay, let's let's try something else first then. How we do Oh we don't need this ones. I can single step into the code, so... And file attach... This one... And... This one, create remote thread, it's running, I think. Run, run, breakpoints. So, oh, interesting. So, it's pointing here. So is 1000B, right? 1000B. Uh, is 1000B, so let's not this one. Yep, 1000B. R100 and then B. And then we're gonna subtract 12. Which looks legit. This is weird. This is really weird. Uh, how do you see? So, Rax is that. So why I don't understand this. I really don't. Uh, so if I so if I follow racks, this is it. Oh. Which address is this? This is the beginning of the section. So this is Rex. One. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve.
that's why it then goes on to <clears throat> that's why it then goes on to data right um, in any case I know why I was writing it in, in the wrong place because it's not current address but give address my bad that's why it was overriding overriding here the function so it should now um, write it correctly um, do we want to make this 13 <laughs> Maybe. Because this needs to start in one. Well, not really, right? So we have zero because when we subtract 12, if we subtract, because what happens is that we are on B and if we subtract C, it goes on to the data section. And that's why we are seeing uh, data instead of code uh, and that's because if we start counting in one at one then we'll count less as well so that's no good we have 12 I'm going to do if it's bigger than 12. So we get 13. So we advance one. Yep. Let's do like this. Let's first do equals 13 and then see where he puts he starts to put the code in. And this will be the last thing I tr I do because it's time to go do be adult basically and stop having fun and just go and do something else like shopping and feeding myself let's go back exception breakpoint So if we follow up, that's the correct one. Uh, that's the correct address. So I'm just gonna knock this one here. Gonna execute. So it points to the right place. Then we take this one it still points to the right place so here it is now we're gonna start to replace code so let's go here ignore this call I don't care 
there. We load the address, which is 1000, and then we put the jump. Yep, perfect. Just perfect. Then we add Yep, then we add the address. Yep, if we follow in this assembler, that's it. And then the last part is just adding the jump, which is going to be this one. And if we follow up on it, following dump in this assembler that looks good my only problem with this is that uh, we're gonna have an export address pointing straight up to the start of the section <laughs> which is not a very common thing um anyways it will work i think so that's what matters that's the only thing that matter um Yeah, I think that's just uh, just okay. Yeah. Now I need to put here is um, you long you long. for new create process w and we should be golden what is going on okay Cross my fingers. There's a very high chance that this will work and we'll be done, at least for now. Um, I did remove the breakpoints, didn't I? I did remove the breakpoints. But where is it? Um, God damn it. I removed the breakpoint, the int tree instru instruction. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't. No, it's still there. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So what we want is when it finishes here, we're going to knock this one out. And we're going to let it run. We're gonna let it run. Yep, perfect. 
you can see here new create process w which is our function and when we just jump to it really really nice really nice now we just need to change the export address table to be pointing here and it should uh, work um, which is great really nice really really nice uh, one of the things I'm gonna just change here is, yeah then I need to change the old create process w which is going to be this one yep it's looking good really good Okay. Thanks to everybody that came in to watch. Um, if you have any comments, questions or whatnot, I'm going to be uploading the, the stream onto YouTube. So you can drop me some of the questions on, um, on the comment section or you can contact me over Twitter um, and I'll see when uh, potentially I'll do another stream uh, on Sunday um, talk to you then cheers bye bye